I picked up Kanye West's Stem Player. It's a neat little device, but it does have me pretty concerned about the potential future of music. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What even is this thing? The Stem Player was conceived by the artist formerly known as Kanye West and London-based tech startup Kano Computing. It released back in fall 2021, but has been picking up considerable buzz in the past few weeks for reasons I will get into shortly. Should you choose to drop the $200 plus shipping fees to get one for yourself, your order will come with a case, a USB-C cable, and the titular Stem Player. It looks like an egg, and it has a silicone covering that feels like skin. This is Kanye West's $200 skin egg. My Stem player came with Ye's 2021 album Donda Preloaded. This made for a good starting point to understand what the player does. You have four haptic sliders that control the levels of four stems, i.e. four groups of audio tracks, vocals, drums, bass, and instrumental. Along with the sliders, the sides of the player have buttons for volume control, moving between songs, and effects for the songs being played. You can speed up, slow down, set a section of the song to loop, and even apply signal processing like reverb. For an audio nerd like me, it can be interesting to play around with the Donda mixes and hear small details that wouldn't have been audible otherwise. For example, on the first verse of 24, you can hear Kanye working out the vocal melody on the instrumental slider. But the real meat and potatoes of this device, in my eye, is its ability to separate the stems of any song. So I loaded my skin egg up with a whole mess of songs. Let's see how they came out. When you upload a song to the Stem Player website, it takes about three to five minutes to split the song into stems and upload them onto the player. You'll notice that the vocals will be the first to be processed, then the drums, the bass, and the instrumental. This will be important to keep in mind for later, and later is now. Based on my testing, I believe the software behind this player primarily focuses on extracting vocals above extracting all other aspects of a mix. Let's take The Weeknd's Sacrifice as our first example. Here's the original. I was and here it is minus the vocals. The overall mix now feels emptier. Now, of course, that's because I took the weekend out, obviously, but I really mean it feels emptier in the details. Take a listen to the guitar in the instrumental slider. Notice how it sounds a bit muffled? That's what I mean by emptier. And when I isolate the weekend, I was born in a city for the winter nights don't let me sleep. He's intelligible, but it's not a clean sound on its own. There are other garbled frequencies from other parts of the mix in there, and Abel's voice sounds filtered in spots. In fact, across all songs I tested, the fine details of a singing performance are usually in the drums. Let's use Carly Rae Jepsen's Runaway With Me. Vocals on their own, and vocals plus drums. In fact, if you isolate the drums at the start, you can hear a bunch of high-pitched tinniness. Now this does make sense. Drums as a collective instrument occupy several different pitch areas across the frequency spectrum. You can't just isolate one section and then call it a day. The upper harmonics for drums are right around where the upper harmonics for vocals sit. Think the ring of a cymbal or the sibilance of a singer. And while we're talking about drums, when isolated, they can sound suction-y. The attack of the drums is often in the instrumental slider, so you get this little scoop. And just so we're all on the same page, when I say attack, I'm referring to the sonic envelope of a sound, comprised of its attack, decay, sustain, and release. I'm not saying there's a slider on here for sick martial arts, or at least if there is, I haven't found it. Let's use Spoon's The Hardest Cut as an example. The full mix. It's calm down, the hardest cut. The drums. and the drums plus instrumental. And sometimes it's vice versa. The attack of other instruments can be in the drums. For Daft Punk's Get Lucky, the attack of Nile Rodgers' guitar is gone from the instrumental, but comes back when you reintroduce the drums. The result is that either the instruments or the drums, or both, can sound formless. And speaking of formless, the bass. Seriously, you isolate that left slider from most songs and you're gonna get a warbled, undefined low end. Charlene, can you pull up Casey Musgrave's Butterflies? Now you're lifting me up, steady.
All right, I've been a bit of a negative boy so far. Let's be positive. I was quite surprised that electric guitars sounded great. Always is Plimsoll Punks, for example. You take the vocals off, and the mix still sounds pretty darn good. As did Oasis's Champagne Supernova, Here are a couple other songs I tested that had interesting results. During D'Angelo and the Vanguard's Sugar Daddy, when the trumpets come in right before the second verse, half of the frequencies are in the vocals and half are in the instrumental. The main hook of Tame Impala's The Less I Know The Better is spread across vocals, bass, and instrumental. And for one last test, I gotta talk about... Remember how Run Away With Me had a ton of high frequency noise in the drums? For Crazy Frog's Axel F, there's a ton of high frequency detail when you mute the vocals. Like I can still make out him saying this is the Crazy Frog. It's funny because the Crazy Frog voice is pitched up, so this must be the stem player having issues with vocals that go outside the expected human singing range. All in total, the stem player's ability to isolate stems from any song is like 75% good. I believe they were mostly focused on preserving the fundamental pitches of each sound source. And while they did succeed in that goal, a lot of finer details were jumbled in the process. And to be clear, that's not necessarily the stem player's fault. Other programs and products that claim to do the same thing this does aren't 100% perfect either. That's because, aside from Donda, none of these mixes were meant to be taken apart. A good mix is like a well-prepared dinner. Each little piece combines together to guide you through an emotion or a set of emotions. And if you remove one piece, of course the whole thing could potentially fall apart. Then again, I guess that's kind of the naughty fun of a device like this. Is that fun worth $200? No. Unless you're an early tech adopter or a massive Kanye fan, you really don't need this. If you're really interested in audio editing and production, I would honestly just recommend you pick up a free copy of Reaper and a download of Isotope RX. I understand you might be drawn to this product specifically or any product with a more humanistic design, and if that's you, I hope you have fun with it, but I just don't think it's worth $200. Now, if that was where the story ended, then I would peg the stem player as a potentially worthwhile tool for musicians and a curious historical footnote in Kanye's career for everyone else. But that changed on February 18th, 2022. Kanye announced that his new album, Donda 2, would be available exclusively on the stem player. First, LOL. Second, LOL again. But of course, as a YouTube music person, I had to pick this up in order to listen to Kanye's new album. Except here's the thing, I haven't actually listened to Donda 2 at all, and I frankly don't plan to anytime soon. No, the thing that got me interested to pick this up and test it out was the announcement he posted on Instagram, and more specifically, the last few sentences. Today, artists get just 12% of the money the industry makes. It's time to free music from this oppressive system. It's time to take control and build our own. First, let me state, I agree with Kanye on this. The current system of streaming that the music industry revolves around is not very good for artists. And while that take is not remotely new, it has been getting more attention as of late. What with Spotify's huge controversy involving Joe Rogan spreading COVID misinformation and Neil Young removing his music from the platform. This has opened the floodgates to discussions ranging from Spotify's position as an audio platform to the paltry royalties it gives to artists, all the way to some realizing that it is quietly insane that we get access to the entire history of recorded music for about 10 bucks a month. A new approach, heck, a new system, one that rewards artists and compensates those involved in the making of your favorite records would be great. And I don't think the stem player is it. Let's get this out of the way. I don't think we're gonna live in a world where every artist sells music on their own device. There is no way to convince a society conditioned to get music in the most convenient way possible to buy dozens of gadgets that only let you listen to one artist or even one album. And personally speaking, while I do love several musicians working today, there are maybe four or five artists whose music I would buy a dedicated listening device from. But while that future isn't coming true anytime soon, there's another 
future that may be more possible. A future where listeners are engaging with music the same way that a mix engineer does. In the PC Mag review of the stem player, Jordan Minor writes, Everything from the drop mix card game to the fuser video game to the Lego video toy lets total amateurs discover the joys of bending music to your will. The Donda stem player continues this trend. Now, on one hand, I think that trend can be a ton of fun. In particular, that fuser game can be a blast. I've made some pretty great mashups in it, not gonna lie. Plus, I mentioned that having Donda preloaded onto the device was a good way to test out the player's full capabilities. But that comes with a caveat. I enjoyed messing around with the Donda stems because I already had the proper mixes from Donda as a point of comparison. I would not be as interested if I was being handed these mixes for the first time because I'd want to hear how the artist intended for me to hear them before making my own masterpiece. It'd be like if you went to a restaurant, the chef slapped a bunch of ingredients on the table and said, all right, make the meal for yourself. And that might sound like a fun or at least interesting experience to have, but I guarantee you wouldn't want to do that every time you went to a restaurant. But Kano Computing seem intent on that kind of industry-wide shakeup, not just in music, but across all facets of life. In interviews following Kanye's announcement, Kano founder Alex Klein positioned the stem player as the beginning of a new way of life, saying, It's time to move beyond gadgetry, beyond the feed of media and information consumption. We are building an end-to-end -end system that merges food, clothing, shelter, and communication. This will make sure we lead healthier, and more integrated lives. This will enable creativity rather than just consumption. You know, the last time I heard a startup founder having grand aspirations of changing the way we live was the guy who started WeWork. Oh no. It all comes down to the question of what this thing ultimately wants to be. Because if it wants to be a dedicated music listening device, the yay pod if you will, it's terrible. There's virtually no UI, navigation is clumsy, the eight gigs of space is abysmal, and adding new music requires a computer and internet connection. Also, uh, that stem player website, which is the only way to add or remove tracks from the device, what happens if that thing goes down? Am I then doomed to carry the Sonic Hero soundtrack on this thing until the day I die? In fact, I kind of feel bad for the team that designed this thing. Like I said before, the device on its own is fine, minus the high price tag. Had Kanye not announced the news about Donda 2, I'd probably be kinder to it. But there's a whole new set of expectations on this because of his announcement. Expectations that I don't think this was designed to reach. Kanye and Kano can talk all they want about how this is freeing music from an oppressive system, but it's not really free. I can isolate vocals as a group from a mix, but what if I want to isolate one vocal harmony? What if a track has reverb and I want to remove it? This is freedom compared to the current system, but it's also freedom on Kanye's terms. Now you might say, well, don't you want to support artists? Surely someone charging what they believe their music is worth is better than a system that doesn't pay for it at all. And... Yeah, but I feel like there's a better middle ground. If you believe Donda 2 is worth $200, fine, more power to you. But not everyone has $200 lying around to buy Kanye's skin egg, and I don't like the idea of a future where recorded music is either a free download off the pirate bay or a luxury symbol. And while we're on the topic of money, I should state the semi-obvious. Kanye speaks about freeing artists from streaming and building our own, but he can afford to separate himself from the streaming ecosystem because he's rich. This reminds me of Taylor Swift's fight to record her own masters and using that as a battle cry for all musicians to take ownership of their work. These are good causes for sure, and I am glad on some level that both artists are bringing attention to them, but it's worth keeping in mind that they can afford to because they're two of the biggest and wealthiest musicians to ever walk the face of the earth. And I wish Kanye's efforts here were also geared towards remedying the system rather than just his own business. Like, what if he started his own equivalent to band camp. We might need it in a few years. I guess that's the thing that frustrates me most about Kanye's lofty statement at the end of that Instagram caption. I truly want to believe that he does care about building better systems for artists, and I can't help but feel like he's just co-opting that language in order to get more people to buy this. But there is one last piece to this, to why I'm worried about the future this thing potentially points to. You see, a lot of people have wondered why the stem player wasn't made an app that you could download for free or for some reasonable price and then use with your existing music library. Here's the thing though, it already is. In September 2021, founder of tech incubator Spatial Labs, Idris Sandu, posted footage of the Stem Player app. From the looks of it, it has all the same features as the physical Stem Player, while being built on the blockchain. Oh boy. 
I'm gonna buy the entire earth. Here's a brief summary to catch you up to speed. Blockchains are a term associated with Web3, the still in development concept for the next phase of the internet. If you've ever heard terms like blockchain, DAOs, or NFTs, you've heard of Web3. The whole idea behind Web3 is decentralization, the foundation of it being built off blockchains, public databases comprised of several nodes that store data representing a user's transactions or receipts. One kind of receipt you could store is a non-fungible token, or an NFT. The idea here is that you could buy a unique digital asset and then have an NFT act as the receipt to said asset. In theory, not only would you then have proof that you own a one-of-a-kind million-dollar funny monkey JPEG, but the token could then act as a way to gain access to certain online communities or events. These are very simplified definitions, but they will suffice for the rest of this discussion. If you'd like to learn more, I've left a few resources in the description, including Dan Olson's phenomenal video on NFTs. Some have championed this new internet as a bastion of freedom and individualism, breaking away from the strangleholds of big tech and government, while others have pointed out things that, to put it kindly, need to be ironed out. I should be upfront and tell you, a lot of what I'm about to say is speculation, pessimistic speculation at that. If what I described does not come true, that's fine. Good, even. Looking back, it'll be a fun little thought experiment. But after learning more about that app, my mind started racing. Let's imagine a future for a moment. One day that STEM player app could become available and it would allow users on their phone to mix stems from Kanye's next album. Fans get to play around with their own mixes, mixes that would then be tied to their blockchain. Hell, maybe they would even be able to mint their mix as an NFT. But those stems still belong to Kanye. Copyright law is still a thing. Kanye made those recorded stems. The fans are accessing those stems through a platform Kanye and his team operate. While fans can pretend like their mixes belong to them, at the end of the day, it's still freedom on Kanye's terms. So maybe one day, Kanye takes the fan mixes that he likes the most and compiles them into the official album. Granted, he doesn't financially compensate the fans who made the mixes, and maybe he doesn't even credit them. Some fine print in the user agreement waives them of any financial or legal right to their mixes. That means he doesn't have to shell out money for mix engineers, mastering engineers, Mike Dean huddled over a Pro Tools rig in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium locker room, and the other personnel who are responsible for your favorite albums. This is an ultimate win-win for Kanye. He posts unfinished songs about beating up Pete Davidson, diehard fans mix the scraps, and he rides their labor to an obscene degree of wealth. And then we have to account for the blockchain part too. Remember, that blockchain is public and, unless you want to put in a lot of effort, permanent. What if a user buys a Taylor Swift album when her beef with Kanye flares up for the hundredth time, and because the receipt is stored on the blockchain, then they become barred from listening to Kanye's music? Now, I should mention, Kanye has come out against NFTs, but he has also come out in favor of another key aspect of Web3, cryptocurrency. He's spoken about the inventors of Bitcoin, saying, And these are guys that really have a perspective on what the true liberation of America and humanity will be. Kanye may be against one form of Web3, for now, but I think it's clear he has reverence towards the overall goal of Web3. I also wanted to see if someone in the crypto space had a more optimistic view on a potential future for this device, so I found this article on eCryptoNews.com, which states, Everything from the Fuser video game to the Drop Mix card game to the Lego video... Um, sorry, I, I read this before. This is right from the PC Mag review. Actually, this whole article is the PC Mag review, with a few extra paragraphs at the start and a short blurb at the end. I, I tried looking for takes from crypto enthusiasts about how the STEM player could empower artists, and I got an article that blatantly takes the work of another writer. This was the first article I found! I can't write better jokes than that! The current system might suck, but this would just be a worse version of that system. I will stress again, the future I just laid out may not come to pass. The crypto and Web3 bubbles could pop as soon as this video comes out, and then we can all laugh at me like the chicken bingus boy I am. And it's not like the cracks aren't already showing. On the very same day that Billboard announced Donda 2 wouldn't chart because of its STEM exclusivity, the STEM player website allowed buyers to stream Donda 2 on the site without having to load it onto the player. I would not be surprised if the album was publicly available within the next few weeks. I would also not be surprised if Kanye and Co. receive a ton of backlash if Donda 2 goes out on streaming. I'll remind you that Kanye had to settle a lawsuit because he said Life of Pablo would be exclusive to title and then wasn't. I hesitate to think of the financial woes if and when Donda 2 goes public. But that's what this whole conversation ultimately revolves around. 
money. It might be a bit about artistic liberation, but it's definitely not about building a better system for artists. It's about charging people $200 for a fun little gadget and then saddling it with unreasonable hype, all because you want to get people to listen to your unfinished album. All the while, the underlying tech is potentially being developed for a future where music listeners are exploited to degrees never before conceived. They promise you a brave new future, and they give you a $200 skin egg. If Kanye West was genuinely interested in fighting back against an unfair streaming ecosystem and building a new one that treats artists fairly, he wouldn't have made this.